Guys, before the video starts I wanted to say that this one is a new anime for this season and the first of them is starting so leave a like, subscribe if you want part 2 and comment below so I know you're enjoying this new anime and ignore my nasal voice because I'm bad again so without further ado now that you've already left a like and commented out on the video. And meanwhile, that girl from before she wakes up and when trying to leave the room, she bumps into the barrier that Ike left in the place and then, she finds some cakes on the table with a note left by Ike where he asks her to eat that for now and stay quiet. And as for Ike, he arrives on the outskirts of the castle, whereupon Sapphiro takes him to the main gate, and then, Ike is worried about the checks that will be carried out on him, as this could reveal his true identity. However, Sapphiro says he will take care of this matter, and throws some of his magical power at him, so when he passes by one of the demons, he states that Ike has great power, worthy of Romberg's grandson. And upon noticing that they still know their master, Ike is surprised, however, Sapphiro asks them to hurry up, after all, the demon lord is waiting to talk to him. In this, they continue forward, and on the way, Ike explains that Dodo Dodderberg Castle was built with the intention of demonstrating the influence and magical power of the Demon Lord, and because of this, the corridors are unnecessarily long. And then, he asks his superior how long it will take for them to get to the hearing room, and Sapphiro just says that they will arrive soon. And taking into consideration the content of the question, she notices that he is jealous of the fact that she can use the floating spell, as it means she doesn't have to walk all that way. And when they arrive in the specific room, Sapphiro asks him to wait, after all, she will need to talk to them first, and in the meantime, Ike explains that the current demon lord, Darrow Kutin, managed to turn the war against humanity, giving the advantage to the demons in a single battle. After all, he filters his companions very well, and eliminates those he considers incompetent. But on the other hand, if he finds someone of value, he will use that person to the limit, and thus, Darrow Kutin made his revolution in the demon lord's army. And furthermore, as the demons they are born without the vocation to work as a team, Darrow Kutin was responsible for changing all that, and while Ike is lost in his thoughts, Sapphiro interrupts him and asks him to enter the room immediately. And when he comes across the current demon lord, he discovers that it is a girl, and she comments to Ike that she found out about his recent deeds, and he, in turn, says that he only did what he was ordered to do. Therefore, he attributes the credits to Sapphiro. And upon noticing this exaggerated display of humility, Darrow Kutin states that he looks like a human. However, Sapphiro enters the middle of the conversation, and says that Ike is Romberg's grandson. In this, the demon lord understands why the boy is so humble and have spared the human leader. And then, before saying anything, Ike thinks very carefully not to say something that generates distrust, in this, he explains that humans may even feel afraid, but in the end, they will not obey any order. And to corroborate what he is saying, Ike reports that during history, cities whose leaders were executed lost their productivity, and in cities where the leaders remained alive, the local people remained productive. And during the conversation, Ike feels that Darrow Kutin also knows the ancient civilization, and used this knowledge to revolutionize the demon lord's army. And at the end of the conversation, Darrow Kutin leaves the place, but first, she says that she wants to see his real face as soon as she has the opportunity opportunity, and as soon as she leaves, Ike takes off his mask and starts to break out in a cold sweat, as he thought she would find out your identity at any time. And with everything resolved in the castle, Ike returns to the place where he left the girl trapped, and as soon as she sees him, the girl again begs him not to kill her, in which he asks her to remain calm and say his name. And then, she explains that her slave number is 13, however, her real name is Sati, in which, Ike scares her again, saying that he cannot let the girl go, since she knows her secret. However, instead of killing her, he intends to make his maid Sati, and after after that, Ike goes to Ivalius to announce his leadership over the city, after all, this is the reward that Darrow Kutin gave him for doing so well, in your mission. And when he asked Sapphiro why it would have to be that city, the girl explained to him that that place is further south than the arsenal, therefore, the city will be on the front line of the war from now on. And Sapphiro informs him that his current mission will be to protect assets and double his tax revenues, and returning to the present, Ike is incredulous at the way she leads a battle, after all, Sapphiro doesn't seem to think much about the post-war outcome, therefore, he decides to to start by rebuilding the city walls, and then, his servant is willing to take care of this matter, and says that rebuilding all the walls will take six months. But upon hearing this, Ike decides to put the demons to work too, so they can reduce six months of work to just one month, and upon seeing how he led things towards a more effective resolution of the work, the servant states that Ike is indeed a true prodigy among demons, therefore, he believes that Ike will become the next demon lord. And at the beginning of it all, a wizard tells us about a man called Ike, who in addition to being a sorcerer, he was also a servant in the demon lord's army and besides that, Ike was the grandson of Romberg, the master sorcerer. And in the middle of a war, one of Ike's servants suggests that they enter the castle through its gates, and as for Ike, he comments that they took over the war faster than he imagined. In this, the servant explains that he gave the orcs a battering ram, just as he ordered, and while they talk, the war continues going on at full strength. In this, Ike goes to the leader of the enemy troop, and introduces himself as the commander of the immortal brigade of the 7th battalion of the demon lord's army. That said, he states that the guy only has three options to choose from now, 
now. The first is to surrender and hand over his territories to Ike and his men. The second is to die by his own hands and have some honor in his last moments of life. And the third is just running away. And upon hearing this, the guy finds it strange that Ike is showing mercy even though he is a demon. However, he states that none of these options work for him. Having said that, the soldier goes after Ike, but ends up getting the worst of it when he is thrown against the ground. And then, Ike's servant goes to the place, and is ordered to take care of the wounds of that soldier and the others who decide to surrender willingly. And meanwhile, Ike's commander is surprised by his achievements. After all, he managed to take the arsenal with a single brigade and in just one week, which makes him an extremely competent leader with a lot of potential. And returning to Ike, he activates a magical barrier across the area, and then goes to the window to observe the progress of the war, in which, he discovers that everything has come to an end, and although he has emerged victorious, Ike feels a little guilty of having to hurt so many people during this whole process. And what's more, Ike feels that he will never be able to get used to the blood and violence that a war generates, so he removes his mask, and reveals that the reason for all this discomfort is that in fact Ike is not a demon, but rather a human. In this, Ike contextualizes us a little more about his life, and says that his teacher, Rombard, was an excellent sorcerer, and in addition, he also had a lot of knowledge about the advanced civilization that lived in that world. And on a certain day, Romberg found Ike as a baby, and decided to take care of him on a pure whim even though the boy was a human. In this, he taught Ike all his knowledge and magic, however, he asked the boy never to speak to no one about the lost civilization, after all, that one day could still bring disaster to the world. But in addition, Ike remembers that his master also told him something else. In this case, he asked Ike never to take off his cloak and mask in front of anyone, because if his identity becomes public, the demon lord will never forgive him. In this, Ike explains that he was given the freedom to take off his mask because he surrounded the entire area with a protective barrier, therefore, no one will be able to get close to him without his prior authorization. However, a girl managed to see him, and when Ike notices her under the table, he is shocked, and the girl despairs and begs him not to kill her. But when she hits her head against the table, the girl ends up fainting, and as for Ike, he feels disappointed, because the secret he hid so well for 20 years was discovered in a very foolish way. Afterwards, he leaves the place, and then his servant comes to him and informs him that they have already managed to take the castle. However, he notices that Ike is leaving many humans alive, and asks why he is doing this. And Ike, in turn, explains that the current demon lord is not like the previous one, therefore, he only cares about the result of the mission, and cares little about the number of people they must kill. But your servant keeps knocking in this key, and says that the other leaders gave them permission to massacre all the people and burn the city, in which, Ike explains that if they kill all the people, there will be no one to pay the taxes, and besides, Arsenal is a city commercial, and if no one lives in the area, there will be no more businesses. And while walking, they come across a group of humans, whereupon one of them speaks to Ike, asking to talk to him, but upon seeing such audacity, the servant states that a simple human has no right to speak to the your master. However, the human begins to be heard after asking about how much taxes they should pay to the demon lord, to which Ike responds that they should pay the same as always, and in case there is anyone who tries to go against the rules of the demon lord's army, that person will be appropriately punished. And during the conversation, Ike is teleported out of nowhere by his commander, who suddenly puts him to face a monster, in which, Ike takes his staff and immediately neutralizes the threat. And upon seeing this, the commander states that he has grown a lot, as in the past he was just a little boy who lived hiding behind his grandfather, Romberg. In this, he introduces his superior as Sapphiro, the commander of the 7th Battalion of the Demon Lord's Army, and in addition, Ike claims that she is the only demon who knows that he is actually a human. And as for his sudden invocation, he asks her to send him a message before doing so, however, Sapphiro says that that wouldn't be funny at all, and then, Ike deduces that she had summoned him to ask about the arsenal, and then she he advances, saying that he would take care of writing his report. In this, Sapphiro explains that his family members have already brought him the information, therefore, she already knows how he conquered the city and what he did after taking it. And upon hearing this, he asks what led her to summon him, and then, she says that Darrowcuton wants to see him in person, after all, Ike made a good impression by taking Arsenum in just one week, and because of that, she is willing to take him to the Demon Lord's castle. And as the battle rages, the wizards cry out for God's help so that they can eliminate their demonic enemies, in which case, one of the demons throws a huge stone at the wall of the human base, opening a giant hole, and with that, the demons manage to gain access to area where human combatants are located. And meanwhile, one of Lilith's men informs her that the war in Rosaria is going well, with the demons massacring the humans, however, upon finding themselves cornered, the humans begin to form an alliance with neighboring countries, with the aim of to change the direction of the war in their favor. And upon hearing this, Lilith explains that humans do in fact usually come together when they are in danger, therefore, she decides that she will task Ike with taking care of this situation, and as for him, Ike receives a cup of coffee, served by Sadie, who when she sees him, she asks if he is tired, and Ike says no, however, his expression shows that he is suspicious of something, and meanwhile, the leader of the Order of the Knights of the White Rose, Alice 
Alastair is summoned for a new mission which consists of simply resuming Ivalia's. And meanwhile, on the other side of the city, Sadie participates in a game where a man shuffles three glasses, one of which has a red ball inside. In this, Sadie must guess which glass the ball is in. And then, the girl points to one of the glasses, and the seller asks her to tell him the amount of her bet. However, Sadie says that he has no money, and upon hearing this, he gets irritated. But soon after seeing the beautiful pair of beauties the girl has, he says she can bet on something else. However, before they proceed with this, they use wind magic to levitate the cups, and discover that in fact none of the cups have the red ball, therefore, they would lose that game regardless of which cup they chose. And in the middle of all this, Ike finds her outside her place of work, in which, Sadie says that she was just very curious to see and explore the city, and besides, she finds it strange about the neutral clothes that Ike was wearing, and he for his once, he explains that their only objective there is to observe the enemy, therefore, he cannot wear clothes that attract so much attention. And as they walk through the city, Ike comments about that so-called, alliance between the kings, appearing to be true, in which Sadie appears to not have understood very well what he said, and then, Ike explains that the alliance between the kings, occurs when the nations come together to face a very great danger, and this causes the personal interests of each nation to be put aside for the greater good. And upon hearing this, Sadie states that this is a wise decision, after all, if they unite to fight the demons, humanity will have a better chance of victory. In this, Ike informs that this alliance has already been formed three times in the past, and each time, the demon lord's army was successfully defeated, being pushed back to Doberberg Castle. And then, Sadie asks if they can do it again, and Ike in turn tells her to stay calm, after all, if the demon lord's army retreats, she will automatically be free since she is a human. However, Sadie explains that in human society, the son of a slave will always be a slave. Therefore, she makes it clear that if he abandons her, she will have the same end as the children next door. In this case, she will be transported and sold to another person to be used as a private slave. In this, Ike says that she can rest assured about that, and then, they continue on their way, when suddenly, that charlatan merchant from before catches their attention, and states that it was Ike who unmasked him in front of everyone, showing that the their cups did not contain any balls. In this, Sadie reminds him that he is not in a position to complain about anything, after all, Ike proved that he was trying to cheat with her, however, the girl's words go in one ear and out the other, and the guy demands them again for what they did, saying that they must pay him with money in Sadie's body. And upon seeing that he will have no choice, Ike analyzes the area, and as there is no one around, he decides to confront the merchant using his magic, and the charlatan's companion begins to feel his legs paralyzed. And when they look down, they discover that the his legs are trapped with the ice spears thrown by Ike, and then he goes to the merchant, and asks about the city's army and what they are talking about, after all, Ike noticed that the soldiers were more agitated than they were. The normal. In this, the charlatan says he doesn't know what's going on, and then, Ike notices that he won't get any useful information from this guy, and decides to get rid of him as soon as possible, but as soon as he says that, the charlatan in a passive magic remembers everything, and starts by saying that the army formed the alliance of kings to fight the demons. But in addition, the merchant also informs that the Rosaria army is eager to strike a blow at the demon lord's army before the alliance manages to do so, and upon having access to this information, Ike deduces that the Rosaria army is interested in winning all glory to his nation, and intends to do so before the alliance is fully formed. And if they manage to do this, they will have a huge advantage during their war strategy councils, and consequently, this will further increase the influence of their army after the war. However, this is a very risky strategy, because if it fails, this will put them in a terrible situation. Situation. In this, Ike asks where exactly they will attack, and then the merchant states that it will be in Ivalia's. After all, the gates of the place are ruined, in addition to the place being completely poorly defended, therefore, this makes this place the easiest to destroy. And after getting all the information he wanted, Ike simply turns his back and leaves the merchant behind with the ice suspended in his direction, and then he returns to his office, when suddenly, Lilith goes to him to ask what he been doing. In this, Ike explains that he was exploring Rose Gardens, and then, she asks about that girl who is next to him, and he introduces Sadie as his maid, then, Lilith becomes jealous, and is willing to be his maid in her place, however, Sadie gets irritated by all this, and tells her to let Ike rest. And what's more, Sadie makes it clear that she was chosen by him to be his servant, and when she says this, the two begin to look at each other with a lot of hatred, competing to see who will be Ike's servant, and meanwhile, the Rosaria army finally arrives in Ivalia's, and upon noticing an eerie silence in the place, they deduce that the local guards are too busy to think about rebuilding the gates. And suddenly, some skeletons start to come out of the ground, and then, then, sniper monsters hit some guards, who in turn, decide to retreat when they notice that they are no match for the monsters, and upon seeing this, Jaron says that the commander of the army made a good decision by fleeing. And besides, he takes advantage of this moment to flatter Ike. After all, they were only able to predict this attack thanks to his spying tactics, and in the middle of the conversation, an archer hits Ike in the back, knocking him to the ground at the same time. And after that, the Galrosha of Ivalia's discovers that the White Wing Knights had to retreat, due to a trap.
trap that the demon lord's army prepared, so, Garolshia hits the table angrily and states that this is not enough of an excuse, therefore, he orders the operation commander to be thrown in a cell to pay for her poor performance during the mission. And upon hearing this, the guard reminds him that the commander in question is Alistair, who in this case is one of the best generals in the entire nation, and if they do this, the morale of the soldiers will be instantly affected, however, Galrosha continues with her decision, saying she doesn't care about the consequences that will come, after all, the commander needs to take responsibility for her actions. And meanwhile, Ike finally wakes up after the arrow he suddenly received, and when he looks to the side, he notices Sapphiro sleeping in the same bed as him, which leaves him amazed, so he complains and asks what she is doing there, and then, she demands a little more respect from him, after all, she was responsible for saving his life earlier. And upon hearing this, he still doesn't understand anything, and Sapphiro in turn, explains that after he received that arrow in the back, she used her magic to heal him and ensure that there were no scars from the blow, in this, he remembers everything that happened and thanks her. And having explained everything, Sapphiro leaves this trivial matter aside, and says that he learned about no humans having died in the last fight, and then, she asks what Ike will do if the demon lord starts to distrust him again, in which, he explains who is trying to find a way for humans and demons to live together, therefore, he will continue to spare the lives of humans, as he has been doing. And after the conversation, Sapphiro leaves him alone, and then, Ike goes back to thinking about the attack he suffered, and wonders if there is someone infiltrated in the castle, and in the middle of his thoughts, he is interrupted by Lilith and Sadie, who go until the local checks on him, and it doesn't take long for the two to start arguing over Ike, and then Jaron ends the game by throwing Lilith out of the room. And then, Ike asks him to investigate the commanders of the White Rose Knights, and shortly after, Jaron discovers that Alistair was arrested after her failure in the last mission, where she retreated after noticing the disproportionate strength of her enemies. And having discovered the prison where she is, Ike goes to the place accompanied by Lilith, who in turn, asks him why he is personally going to that place, and he explains that he intends to ask Alistair something directly, and in addition, he he claims he didn't ask her to follow him. And then, Lilith shows that she was jealous when he was alone with Sadie, so she wants to make up for it by accompanying him in this operation, and after walking a little further, they locate the main entrance to the prison, and Ike decides to enter the place of as peacefully and stealthily as possible. However, Lilith goes against this idea, and uses violence to erase the guards at the gate, and thus, they have access to the place, and when faced with the size of that prison, Ike states that it will take them a long time to find Alistair. However, Lilith uses violence again, and obtains the information from one of the guards. But before they can move forward, some guards come to them to stop them, so Ike continues on his way, leaving Lilith behind, and upon arriving at the cell, Alistair tries to attack him as a way of defending himself. But, when everything calms down, Ike asks if she would have sent an assassin to kill him in Ivalia's during the last battle, but instead of answering him, she asks if he really is a demon, and in the middle of all this, others guards start coming to the cell to get him, and as for Alistair, she starts to suspect that maybe Ike could be human. When he sees himself with no way out, he uses Magicto stop time, and then he goes to the guards who were threatening him, and uses the black wind magic to throw them away, but soon after, another guard, even stronger, tries to attack him from behind. And then, Ike dodges and uses another magic to make the guard fall from that floor, however, it also protects him from death, which leaves Alistair confused, and soon after, the floor below her feet also collapses, so Ike runs to save her too, and when he notices that she still hasn't said his name, he introduces himself to her as Ike, the commander of the Immortal Brigade of the 7th Battalion of the Demon King's Army. And and upon hearing this, she notes that it was he who protected Ivalia's with all that preparation and power, and as for him, he asks again if it was she who sent an assassin to kill him, in which case, she states that she has nothing to do with him. Talk to a demon, so if he intends to kill her, she says she is willing to do so. And upon noticing the girl's resistance, he rests his arms at her head, and uses his mind reading magic, but in the middle of all this, Lilith goes to the scene, and interprets this scene in the wrong way, thinking that Ike is making out with Alistair. And as for him, Ike finally finishes reading the commander's mind, and decides to go his way, ignoring Lilith's complaints. In this, Alistair finds it strange that they are simply leaving the prison, and deduces that Ike's objective was just go until she laughs in her face. But, Ike makes it clear that he didn't go there to do that, and says that Alistair really has nothing to do with the assassination attempt he suffered. That being said, he opens a portal and leaves with Lilith, and upon meeting with Sadie, he presents her with grains of rice that he collected in Ivalia's, which in this case is an agricultural city with fertile soil. And while listening to these difficult words, Sadie doesn't understand anything. And then, Ike explains that the fact that the soil is so fertile will mean that they won't need as many farmers in the area, therefore, they will be able to direct these same workers to other areas' essentials, and thus, the country will become richer, and as a consequence the tax will go unnoticed. That said, he asks Sadie to cook the rice, but instead of teaching her how the food is prepared, he just gives her some tips, and leaves the rest of the preparation to her, and as for Ike, he gathers the entire army, and upon remembering the arrow incident, he explains that the arrow was enemy weaponry, however, Alistair knew 
nothing about it and then, Ike deduces that the person who attacked him made it look like it was the White Wing Knights of purpose. Therefore, he believes that there is a spy in his army and so, he uses his power of mind reading and discovers the imposter at the same moment and after that he goes to Sapphiro and with a few words, she notices that he apparently found some traitor in which Ike explains that the spy is Jace, the one-eyed goblin and then, Sapphiro states that he should receive a corresponding punishment. And meanwhile, Jace receives bad information from his companions and notices that he has just been discovered so Ike goes to the place to see him in person and Jace, in turn, starts the conversation by disdaining the arrow shot that Ike took when he left. Neglect. In this, Ike states that he really should have been more careful, especially when it comes to dealing with traitors, and upon hearing this last sentence, Jace notes that he already knows everything, however, he feels confident, and states that the your army is much more powerful than his. However, in the middle of the conversation, several fireballs begin to fall throughout the area, and high up in the sky, Sapphiro begins to cast his magic, causing even more fireballs to fall on the city, and in the middle after all this, she remembers that Ike is also just below, however, she continues attacking anyway, because she is sure that he will find a way to save himself. And as for Ike, he complains about the fact that she is destroying the city with everything, after all, rebuilding the place later will be a lot of work, therefore, he believes that she is exaggerating a little in the punishment she is giving to the goblins, and in the midst of this chaos to do, Ike goes to Jace, and says he will have two options. Given this situation, the first would Beto surrender now peacefully, and the second is to surrender after the entire city is destroyed. And Jace, in turn, puts a third option on the table, in this case, he orders his allies to fight against Ike and takes the opportunity to hide behind a rock, and states that he will leave his friends fighting while he buys time to escape the place, in this, he flees to a forested area, and when looking at the city from afar, completely destroyed, Jace states that the war is just beginning, having said that, he turns to continue fleeing, however, Ike finds him, and tells him to give up again, and Jace asks how he found that secret path, after all, in his head, only he knew that escape route, and Ike explains that one of his family members followed him, delivering the exact location of your target. And when he sees no way out, Jace complains again, and Ike just advises him to surrender quickly, as he won't gain anything if he continues resisting. In this, Jace states that he has no right to give him orders, therefore, he returns when attempting a conflict. However, Ike simply sets up a shield to protect him, and makes it clear that Jace is too weak to break that barrier. And then, he throws Jace against a tree and holds him by the arms, and after all this, Jace finally decides to start talking softly, and says that he was doing a lot of things wrong. In this, he notices why the Demon Lord's army had so much for Ike. After all, he really has a lot of talent, as well as powerful magic and a lot of intelligence. And having said all that, Jace decides to make him a proposal. In this case, he wants to take over the leadership of the Demon Lord's army alongside Ike, and to try to convince him, Jace explains that even though they have been fighting against humans for a long time, the current Demon Lord never did anything for them, even though they were all demons. And besides, Jace states that even though they really like killing humans, the current Demon Lord doesn't let them do it without a good reason, which makes everything much more boring, and with that, most of the demons started to feeling dissatisfied, therefore, Jace proposes that the two of them together rebel against this and change the Demon Lord's army on their own. And upon hearing his entire plan, Ike obviously refuses to have a traitor as his ally, so Jace tries to hit him by throwing a blade in his direction, however, Ike dodges the attack without showing the slightest surprise, after all, he he already knew that Jace would try something, but he didn't think it would be so ineffective. And furthermore, Ike notes that in the middle of the conversation, Jace said that he was going to join them, so that means that there is someone helping him with this plan to take leadership of the Demon Lord, and as for Jace, he he refuses to talk about it, but Sapphiro appears just in time to force him to talk, however, Jace falls to the ground with symptoms of poisoning, so Ike deduces that he has been poisoned by his own comrades. And Sapphiro, in turn, says that Jace's comrades despise him, therefore, there is no need for him to remain silent just to protect them, but before he could speak the names, Jace ends up dying from the poison, and after that, they go to the castle to inform Darrowcuton, and Sapphiro informs that whoever is behind all this is the head of the 3rd Battalion, Bastio. In this, Darrowcuton asks if she has any proof, and Sapphiro says that he dragged his deputy commander to his side, and was planning to kill her and her deputy, and upon hearing her version, Darrowcuton asks to hear the report from Guy behind them. And this was another video, if you liked it and want more videos like this, subscribe, leave your like and see you next time.